Hello everybody, it's Gary Halican here, and today we are looking at the Figma Hunter from Bloodborne. Of course, Bloodborne is one of the best games ever, right? So this is a figure that everybody should want. However, this is, of course, a cheap fake. The real Figma Bloodborne Hunter is a very expensive figure, and this is a cheap fake that I got from Timu. They also had a Lady Maria, but she was about twice the price of this one, so I will watch for uh, if that one goes down in price, and maybe I will get that one too. Um, but this is the Hunter right here, and the box looks pretty good, but there are some ways that we can tell it's a fake. Um, as far as I can tell, the real one should have the block that says the number in it in bright red, and it's very dark red on this box. And in general, the printing of all the pictures on this box are not very colorful, and they're kind of washed out looking. So if you were to compare that to the real box, I think you would see uh, much brighter colors, much easier to see pictures on here. And we can't really see the figure very well at all through the uh, window here. What I can see of him looks pretty good, but we might as well just go ahead and get him out and see what we think. Okay, so here's the hunter out of the box, and first impressions are pretty good on this. Um, all the detail is painted everywhere it should be for the most part. It uh, looks pretty good. There's some silver here and gold on the armor. The scarf has a lot of nice detail. So um, pretty good first impression on this. The quality doesn't feel real bad on it at all. It does um, smell kind of funny. Probably the uh, lead paint or something in there right, that you get with some of these bootleg kind of things, um, but the quality feels pretty good so far. I haven't moved around all the joints yet, though, so we will find out about that. Um, of course, in the game, the hunter can be a man or a woman, right, so this figure is um, very skinny and, you know, has the face covered, so I think you could reasonably um, pretend that it's either one, right, whatever you made your hunter when you were playing the game, there are definitely some tells, though, on this that it is a fake. So, for one, the uh, coat is definitely green, and I don't think the coat is ever supposed to be green. Um, I think it's just black in the game. It might have some other, you know, detail kind of colors in it, but it's definitely green here on the figure. Um, you might also see here the elbow joints are the wrong color, so the elbow, elbow joints are black. Right, and they don't go with the green coat at all. And then, if we look up close at the face, the uh, eyes are uh, pretty goofy on there. So the eyes are not really painted well. You can see that there. They're a little bit goofy looking. So I think those are some things, um, you know, that might lead you to believe that this is a fake. Uh, but it otherwise uh, seems pretty nice. I think it looks pretty good. It is definitely... The hunter captures the hunter attire quite well there, other than being green. All right, so let's see articulation, and let's hope that none of the uh, joints uh, blow up and explode as we try to move them. So the head, we don't really get much at all because of the scarf. We can turn side to side there, so that's, that's good. We can't really get much in the way of up and down or tilt, anything like that. Because of the scarf will hinder that some. So the arms, we don't really get them to go out very far. Because of the design of the jacket. If they wiggle it, there we go. Alright, so wiggling a little bit. Got the arm up that far past uh, straight out. So that's good. And we can twist around at the elbow. Not really go forward and back very much. A little bit. Sorry, I should have said twist around at the shoulder. Maybe a little bit of forward and back. No bicep swivel. And the elbow is just past 90 degrees, maybe. So not real great at the elbow, but not horrible. And then at the wrist, we've got swivel there at the wrist. And it looks like, yeah, we do have hinges there at the wrist as well. And we've got a joint at the chest that seems pretty decent. So, of course, the coat hinders that some, but it's not bad we get... Pretty good lean back, actually very good lean back, and 
See, it's bending at the waist. Not really too much crunch forward. A little bit of crunch forward. And then, of course, can twist here. And actually, the top part of the coat is separate from the coat tails. So that allows for a lot more movement there at the chest and at the waist. So at the waist, the coat tails are actually on joints. And it's kind of interesting. You can see the slot in here where the coat tail joint fits in so that it will lay kind of flush against the back. But you can put the coat tails up like that. And then at the legs, we get quite good kick forward there. And you can go back some, especially if we move the coat tail out of the way. And not really, yeah, you do have thigh swivel, so we can swivel at the thighs there. The knee is, looks like, so this, right out of the package, this coat tail had fallen off. Um, and I got it back on there, and it seemed pretty good, but if you try to move it too much, that one falls off. So we'll leave it off for now. Oh, knee, it looks like, you just have single knee about that far. That's pretty good, though can twist at the knee and at the ankle we get not really up very much at all point down that far and at the toe and can bend a little in like that so articulation not bad most important thing about this though is you can see there i moved most of the joints and none of them exploded that knee is better than this one now about the same but you can see here i moved all the joints and none of them exploded so this is a pretty good quality fake here and in fact i like it quite a bit so far so let me put it on the stand and then we'll see we can probably get some more dynamic poses here the stand you can tell it's a fake because there's some bubbles in it if we got the real very expensive one there wouldn't be any bubbles also there's not really much range of movement to the arm on this stand here so you're basically going to get a, in a standing pose here and not be able to do much else if we're using the stand and it looks like too we're gonna have to try to align the jacket there's a hole in the jacket and a hole in the back and they're not really lined up here so I don't know I'm going to forego the use of the stand for the moment the figure seems to uh, stand up okay on its own just like that so and so actually so far really good on this all right for accessories we get a good amount of stuff so we get eight hands eight extra hands including and there's 10 all together then including the fists that are on it and so we get trigger fingers for both hands and open hands for both hands and kind of wider holding hands for both but you notice here we've got two of the same one so we get two right hands that are the same with kind of the tighter holding hand pose there so again another sign that this is a fake other accessories then we get a small group of the messengers here carrying a message probably telling you to uh you know jump off the next uh uh, ledge or something like that right because of course in the game the other players right leave these messages and so they are suitably creepy there and then we get the i think this is the hunter blunderbuss and not the hunter pistol because the end of it uh splays out a little bit let me know in the comments i'm not entirely sure on that but it looks really good it's got some silver on there and a lot of detail so it looks really good. We'll see uh, how well the hunter does it holding it here in a second. And then, of course, the main accessory, we get the saw cleaver. And it looks quite good, too. A lot of detail on it. And we'll transform it. So very simple there. To transform it, All right, just folds up like that. So let me put some holding hands on here and we'll see how this turns out so let me get the left trigger finger
And we'll see how tough it is to put the other hand on. Not too bad. Trigger finger hand went on pretty easily there. And there we go. No trouble at all holding the, the gun. So, excellent. Excellent there. No trouble at all holding the gun. Let me get one of the holding hands here. We'll see how tough this one is to get on. This one's being a little less ruly than the other one. Yeah, there we go. It's on. Okay, and we'll get the cleaver here. And there we go. All right, so no trouble holding the weapons there. So that's always a good sign. So this figure looks pretty decent, and it stands up on its own, and it can hold its weapons. So overall, I would say that is a great success. The uh, only trouble with it is the one coat tail falling off. Otherwise, this is really good. So let's do some size comparisons. Okay, for size comparisons, here's the Hunter with Marvel Legends Cersei. So the Hunter is a little bit smaller than six inch scale, I guess I would say. I'd say the Hunter is a little bit small. Um, like I said, since the Hunter is so small and skinny, you can decide whether it's the male hunter or the uh, female hunter, whichever you played as in the game. You know, I think that works fine. For me, it looks, I think, a little more like the uh, woman hunter, but it uh, whatever you want. I think that's kind of a good design for the figure. Like I said, since the character can be a man or woman in the game, they uh, hit a good middle ground with the figure here. Um, and it looks just like on the uh, cover of the box, too. But you can see here, Cersei in the six inch scale is a little bit taller, heads is a little bit bigger. So I would say the Hunter is a little bit small for the six inch scale. So here is the Mortal Kombat Shadow of Spawn figure. Of course, much larger there in the uh, seven inch scale. Here is a typical 12 ounce beverage can. And then as always, here is John Cena. All right, so that was the Figma Hunter from Bloodborne. Uh, it's great, and this is a great value, too. I think this was about $11 on Timu, uh, much, much cheaper than the uh, the real one. Obviously, of course, you would want the real officially licensed one if you could get it, but if you can only get this one, um, I think it's a great value. The details are all good, and the uh, quality is pretty good. And like I said, I will watch for if Lady Maria drops in price a lot, and maybe I'll get her too. Um, but so let me know in the comments if you have this one, or if you have the real version of it. Let me know also in the comments if you got the Platinum Trophy on Bloodborne, because I did. It's one of the, like, only three or four games I've ever Platinum Trophied. Um, and let me know what else would be cool to look at in the comments. And I think I will do some dramatic poses with this one. So stay tuned for dramatic poses. And we'll see you in the next review.